Шановні колеги, esteemed colleagues, dear journalists and speakers, good morning. We are happy to welcome you to our press conference, uh, uh, which is called 20 uh, Bells, which the co which experts would like to advise the Parliament to pass. Yesterday, the parliamentary session of new convocation has opened, and we welcome our new MPs. Uh, and I think it's a good time to publicize the recommendations from civil society uh, and uh, that's a good time to offer new legislative initiatives. Uh, today, the animation package of reform would like to present uh, 20 new bills uh, uh, for the parliamentary approval and the even more broader legislative initiatives. Our today's panelists are Mr. Igor Borakovsky, uh, co-chairman of the Council, reanimation package of reforms. Mr. Anatoly Tkachuk, member of the Council, reanimation package of reforms. Ms. Elena Kravchenko, executive director of the ecology law and uh, human being uh, CSO. And Ms. Elena Tregub, Secretary General of the Independent Defense and the Corruption Committee, NACA expert of the RPR Group National Security. We are also waiting for Mr. Igor Burakovsky, co-chairman of the Council Reanimation Package of Reco Reforms. Oh, you have uh, in your handouts the infographics which uh, uh, presents uh, the uh, top priority bills which we recommend to Verkhovna Rada. Uh, I would like to invite Mr. Anatoly Tkachuk. As far as I know, he has prepared the presentation, so we will have a chance to look at multimedia. Will you please switch on my presentation? Good afternoon, dear friends. Yesterday, I visited Verhom Narada intentionally to observe the, the beginning of the new term. And uh, um, uh, and I have observed that Today, it is a possibility to pass any bill in the Verkhovna Rada, and the biggest problem is which bill to pass. Uh, so first, our priority is the regional development of Ukraine, the decentralization reform. So uh, my first question, my first problem, which I said here, uh, whether to continue or to finish. Uh, uh, and uh, quite often we hear that uh, decentralization reform is quite successful. Uh, let us look at the figures. Uh, we have rather successfully created almost one thousand uh, amalgamated communities uh, and uh, uh, much is uh, uh, changing in those local communities, but uh, uh, there is a big percentage uh, of population uh, which still resides in decentralized Ukraine, and the gap between decentralized communities and centralized vertical, vertically subordinated communities is growing. So whether Ukraine is ready for continuation of this reform. At this, I appear to see that 
uh, uh, almost the entire territory uh, uh, Ukraine is covered by amalgamated territorial communities, uh, more than 1,365, and only uh, those uh, small blank spots represent not amalgamated communities. Let us look at the growth of local budgets. We have considerable growth in local budgets and uh, uh, thus local communities have enough money, have enough funds to finalize the reform. Uh, let us look at this slide how, uh, showing how the state uh, uh, support to the territories, uh, the uh, f public support to the uh, local communities is provided. L this slide shows uh, that uh, square of lands uh, which was transferred to, from the state to local communities as much as almost uh, uh, Ternopil region, the entire region of Ukraine was given to the local communities. Uh, in, in uh, absolute figures, but the parallel existence of two Ukraines, decentralized and centralized, is a big evil, and uh, financing of the non-centralized Ukraine is very inefficient, and it is open for theft and corruption. The more you distribute in the uh, hand uh, manner, the more this is prone to corruption. So, uh, and in uh, the uh, regions where amalgamated communities are created, uh, the lo local state administrations have nothing to do. Uh, when a local community is in those places where they do not have the right to, to own their lands on which they are located, they can not build new uh, schools, hospitals, etc. Uh, then. Uh, um, uh, the lack of decentralization results uh, in uh, the lack of oversight over uh, uh, regional development. Between 2015-2017, the system for planning and financing of regional development, uh, but in 2018, uh, this system one uh, uh, was uh, uh, damaged, considerably damaged by the parliament. What what should be done? Uh, now we have the opportunity to change this for the best. So what should we do today to approve administrative and territorial uh, uh, division of Ukraine and, uh, uh, and in each region to establish the clear uh, division into uh, sub-regions? Mm. Uh, then we should approve the law about amendments uh, to the law about uh, urban construction. This law had passed first reading and now uh, re re stays in the parliament uh, and uh, 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 it will regulate uh, development of a huge uh, square of uh, the communal land. Uh, then to change uh, uh, the 
system of local elections uh, and uh, uh, in order to prevent uh, transformation of local uh, uh, governmental bodies into uh, extremely political bodies uh, which uh, compete with central uh, administration uh, then uh, uh, approve uh, new elections uh, uh, next summer uh, then approve new versions uh, for the laws uh, for local self-governance in Ukraine and local state administrations uh, because uh, Uh, this should regulate and bring district administrations closer to um, the European analogs. Uh, uh, then introduce changes to the budget code of Ukraine, uh, particularly Article 24.1. Uh, that is uh, 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 amendments to the state fund for regional development then pass the package of laws which will harmonize the uh, laws about uh, stimulation of the uh, region's growth etc uh, and some others. All those bills which we discuss uh, could be uh, could be passed immediately because they are fully ready for the passage and this is a good chance that the cabinet of ministers can reapply these laws to the parliament and uh, uh, re-enter them and these absolutely ready draft laws could be passed uh, if uh, those draft laws will be passed very quickly, we will have a breakthrough in our decentralization reform. Thank you for your presentation. Now I would like to give the floor to Ms. Elena Kravchenko, who will describe necessary bills which should be passed in the environmental area. Uh, much was done in the environmental sphere during the last five years and uh, many reforms were to be continued. Uh, the biggest breakthrough was done in the waste management uh, area because we understand this issue may uh, very quickly become dangerous. So this reform is aimed at both the horizontal changes in the sector of waste management and uh, also the vertical management about the state inspection state environmental inspection which requires uh, immediate modernization and anti-corruption cleaning uh, here we have uh, the uh, laws, uh, um, the, law, the draft laws, the bills, which are absolutely uh, ready for passage in the parliament. Um, uh, another package uh, of laws is about, uh, about strengthening uh, financial responsibility for uh, violation of the environmental norms. Uh, uh, then uh, a big area is uh, a protection of the non-industrial environment that is about uh, the law of Ukraine about emerald resources so to say uh, uh, 
and the big area of course waste management uh, the framework law about waste management which is fully coordinated then we extremely need the law of ukraine about uh, waste batteries about electro radio electronic uh, waste ele radio electronic equipment and waste package uh, packages uh, we also need amendments uh, to the law about cruel treatment of uh, animals mm. uh, uh, actually the environmental ministry will not exist further from yesterday uh, we have been hearing talks that the uh, ministry of environment was inefficient it should it should be repealed but uh, uh, the uh, professional ministry had laid down uh, true foundations of the environmental protection during last five year years is very dangerous. Uh, of course, it don't have a very fashionable look, but um, uh, 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 you can not repeal it. Uh, just an imagine just imagine you have made a good foundation in the uh, in the new building a building and then decided not to build it further unification of the ministry of uh, en energy and uh, the Ministry of Environment uh, is uh, will mean very dangerous trend. Uh, in other countries, environmental ministry is merged with either agriculture or tourism or uh, uh, um, uh, uh, sustainable development. Uh, while in Ukraine, uh, we want to merge the the ministry uh, of environment. Uh, will uh, uh but they they want to merge it with the ministry of coal and fuel and uh, uh while the function of the ministry of environment is to carry out uh, environmental assessment and uh, doing this inside the same ministry will inevitably result in the conflict of interests currently we have the uh, uh, number of uh, lawsuits uh, against uh, the Ministry of Coal which was applied by the Ministry of Environment and uh, uh, in the future uh, uh, we should prevent creation of the Ministry of Energy and uh, Environmental Protection in the European Union, uh, all the ministries uh, which are united with the environmental ministry, the world environmental and uh, priority of environment is in the first position. The, while the Ministry of Energy and Environment uh, could be uh, 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 exists now only in Kazakhstan, uh, not in Europe. Uh, uh, and this is seen as a mistake uh, by many by many uh, European partners. And by the way, Kazakhstan has a lot of problems with the environment as of today. We have, uh, unfortunately, a generation of uh, um, children who suffered from poor environment, and this is a result of our negligence to the environment. Uh, the double uh, e, uh, WHO organization proves that Ukraine uh, takes one of the priority positions in terms of uh, 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 pollution, air pollution. Uh, we have big problems with uncontrolled extraction of embers, for example. Uh, we have huge problems uh, with. Uh, 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 um, uh, 
war is, uh, with uh, environmental issues closely related to the military conflict because our military conflict is the east is at the uh, um, uh, territory of uh, environmental um, uh, danger and uh, um, now we start thinking how to liquidate the environmental uh, uh, threats uh, at those territories which we want to bring back uh, uh, to Ukrainian governance in the East. Of course, somebody has to convince the president and his team that Ukraine deserves to have a separate Ministry of Environment and uh, uh, and uh, it should be at least well balanced to have the Ministry of Environment and maybe Energy. You should not merge together these two spheres and at least balance the special knowledge, the special knowledge about environment to preserve specialists and experts and to hear uh, the uh, experts from NGOs who are ready to help uh, the state and don't take blind steps uh, uh, and not just inform the uh, civil civil society via public interviews of the um, um, uh, ruling party. Uh, thank you, Elena. We believe uh, that this won't be done blindly and uh, we will inform you about the results of our approach to the parliament. Now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Kaliushka. Uh, you probably know that that uh, the um, public administration reform includes a lot of things, but would you please describe maybe the most important ones? Thank you, Reno. Uh, I have rather limited time now and uh, after my first day yesterday in the Verkhovna Rada I learned much and uh, uh, found much about our new uh, people in power. So now uh, the most important. Yesterday there was uh, the glorious day opening of the new Verkhovna Rada of new convocation. So uh, they had formed the government yesterday. As for the parliament itself, uh, we have uh, more positive vision of it and we appreciate very much that they uh, so unanimously uh, voted for the leadership of, of the Verkhovna Rada. At the same time, we had clearly Mr. Igor Burak, Professor Burakovsky had joined us. Uh, as for the self-organization capacities of Verkhovna Rada, uh, we very much appreciate the uh, pace with which they uh, um, uh, uh, acted. Uh, then the uh, s uh, spread of the seeds is very um, surprising. Uh, although many people may ask uh, why, 
why it is important but this is the result of 200 years history 200 years tradition uh, of the european uh, parliamentarism when you look at the european continental parliaments you will find out that they have very similar uh, halls similar uh, layout of these halls and the places the uh, layout for the factions is um, uh, almost the same so when for the first uh, time in not only in ukrainian history but in uh, all in all the european uh, 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 system uh, the uh, approach when uh, the biggest uh, faction is sitting in front while uh, all the rest of factions sit in the back this represents how our today's leadership understands the uh, role of parliamentarism and representation in this country the number of committees was cut down from 28 to 23 which is positive but they made a decision uh, to cut, uh, to establish different uh, uh, membership uh, figures for each committee. For example, uh, they had limited the number of MPs for each committee, and if uh, not five but 15 MPs. Uh, or want to work in them i do not understand why to establish the committees which have only five members the logic of parliamentary committees is that uh, uh, the committees parliamentary committees should have approximately uh, equal numbers of uh, members for each committee in order to have approximately equal workload. <clears throat> While new MPs uh, had preserved a huge uh, disproportion between committees, inequality. Uh, for my self i uh, 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 explain this that they want uh, to preserve majority in many uh, in those committees while uh, while uh, there are some committees where the people's of servant mps do not wish to uh, to work while other factions want to work but they are not allowed and they simply cut down the numbers of poly uh, of the uh, members of parliamentary committees mm. I like uh, very much uh, presentation from uh, Ruslan Stefanchuk, uh, Deputy Speaker of the Parliament, which, uh, uh, in which he presented the logic for the legislative initiatives development. Uh, the Center for Political uh, uh, and law reform plans uh, to draft a letter to him suggesting our assistance in implementation of his plan the second formation of the government probably many people uh, like uh, that within liked that within one day we managed to uh, get both the parliament and the government uh, while well, uh, 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 
division of seats in the uh, parliament within was days very good than uh, the uh, uh, government which is formed within one day is rather suspicious this un means that the government was not uh, formed by the prime minister the prime minister was appointed uh, around 5 p.m. while at 7 p.m. we had uh, already the prime minister and during these two hours uh, the uh, newly appointed prime minister uh, stayed uh, all the time in the um, uh, uh, in the plenary room and uh, held no consultations. Uh, in other countries, this is never done. Uh, n never uh, the government is uh, appointed in advance. The uh, Prime Minister could have preliminary uh, consultations and negotiations, but only after appointment in the Parliament, the Prime Minister uh, can uh, start uh, official consultations in his official capacity with other candidates to the ministries. If uh, 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 again, uh, this procedure um, suggests that this is not a European go government. This is a, a team of people who will carry out some functions. And there is a general rule when the government is formed from outside, it is uh, governed from outside. The prime minister will have no the. Um, uh, uh, influence upon this uh, uh, um, uh, this government. Mm. Uh, oh, I do not know all the members of this government, uh, uh, but those whom I know, they are young professionals, and uh, I am not sure whether they are uh, wise enough uh, uh, to, to govern, but uh, I still have hopes that being young professionals, they will be able to work. And now I will new government uh, has uh, uh, 16 members and very discussional is the merger of some ministries. I do not see any problem. The Ministry of Agriculture was merged with the Ministry of Economy. There will be one minister who the Ministry of Culture, the Ministry of Youth, the Ministry of Information are united in one Ministry of Humanitarian Policy. The Ministry of Environment and Ministry of Energy are merged and the Ministry of Veterans is merged with the Ministry of Temporary Occupied Territories. I believe that all those uh, things uh, are on the one hand logical. On the other hand, this is rather risky. The risk is that each of those policies um, is important and uh, one, ma one minister is responsible for many policies, then he is able to devote, uh, the, he is less, he or she is less able to devote uh, sufficient attention to each of those policies. <laughs> And the question which I uh, raised yesterday and nobody answered me, why in the government we do not have the first vice prime minister which is directly uh, stipulated by Ukrainian legislation. Nevertheless, uh, 
neither member of government has this position. So, in order to make this process smoother, the reanimation package of reforms suggests to pass new law on the cabinet of ministers and central executive bodies in new version. This draft law was uh, uh, prepared by working group established by the cabinet of ministers uh, a year ago uh, which com and this working group comprised international experts uh, um, uh, reanimation package of reforms uh, and the cabinet we believe that this draft law should be very quickly passed the uh, next law which should be passed very quickly is about administration administrative procedure while the first law about the cabinet of ministers is needed for the cabinet the second law about administrative procedure is needed for communication with uh, citizens it is needed to civil society to the citizens to protect their position in communication with bureaucrats uh, and the law about all ukrainian referendum in order to prevent abuse of a referendum the law has to define to determine which uh, referenda uh, could be held and in order to prevent that uh, any sort of referendum could be announced at any moment thank you mr kaleushka for the yesterday uh, for the f for your comments on the yesterday's events the public administration sector um, comprises five draft, draft laws which we advise uh, to be passed by the new year. Now I would like to invite Ms. Elena Trigub to speak on the uh, national security and defense. Um, thank you, RPR, for providing this platform. Thank you, the Crisis Media Center, about uh, for for this platform for RPR. Our uh, anti-corruption committee on uh, defense issues deals with the problems which actually uh, promoted the fall down of the previous administration um, when each uh, week we heard news about corruption in Ukar Abaron Pro. And of course, new authority, uh, new power wants to make positive steps in this area. When we speak about the necessity uh, of the defense, national defense reforms, we should remember that today the Ukrainian defense budget is 108 uh, billion uh, hryvnia, and we have no tools to. Uh, oversee to to uh, to oversight the spending of this huge budget unfortunately unlike previous uh, speakers uh, who mentioned that we have ready uh, bills uh, for the passage in the parliament in my area the national defense uh, we cannot uh, present such a bill 
for example, the law about protection of classified information. This is the key law for the whole defense and security era, uh, um, uh, area. And uh, as of now, this bill stays in the uh, State Security and Defense Council. It had to be passed together with the um, national security and defense law last year, but it was not submitted to the parliament at that time. President Zelensky, in writing, had promised us that the law about protection of uh, uh, class, state classified information uh, will be top priority. The next is draft law about formation of this so-called state military order. Uh, probably you know that 90% of the state military procurements are uh, classified, are confidential. Uh, now it is uh, broadly recognized that this uh, should be changed and uh, that uh, state uh, uh, military procurements should be uh, uh, partially uh, disclosed. Mm. Uh, and only uh, five or ten percent of state uh, military procurement could be legitim legitimately classified as secret information. Uh, civil activists and RPR uh, encourage the government uh, uh, to establish this. Uh, Mm, a balance between purely uh, classified, purely secret state military procurement and more open uh, um, uh, procurement, which will be opened for uh, tenders. Mm. The next uh, law about uh, 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 reform of SBU in uh, line of the uh, PASI recommendations. SBU should uh, preserve only counterintelligence, protection of state secrecy, and uh, fight against terrorism functions. Uh, the new power has a new vision. Uh, Mr. Bakanov uh, yesterday expressed uh, that idea that uh, economic uh, department of SBU will uh, um, cope with the uh, uh, smuggling at uh, the in the custom service. If he would be unable to uh, uh, to do this very quickly in recent future, we would uh, 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 suggest that uh, SBU should stop dealing with economic uh, issues and transfer this function to NABU uh, it's and the other borders. Then uh, Ukrainian parliament has a big uh, function of the parliamentary oversight, but unfortunately parliamentary committee from the previous uh, parliament convocation did not carry out that function because Mr. Pashinsky, head of that uh, committee, was the main figure uh, in the center of many corruption scandals and his son was involved into military corruption schemes. Yesterday we saw the list uh, of uh, uh, the parliamentary committee on uh, security, defense and intelligence uh, uh, and uh, uh, 
we do not have such figures as Pashinsky. There are some people who are close to the defense sector, but uh, uh, it is important to have in such a committee, uh, to have people in such a committee who are able to ask uh, correct questions in, in the area of parliamentary oversight. And uh, we... Um, a cautious optimist in terms of this committee and we offer our assistance to this parliamentary committee we are open for trainings for um, experience we can share experience from other countries how to establish good relations with the accounting chamber how to control uh, state military procurements uh, and how to carry out parliamentary oversight in this area. I would like to to mention that we very positively take yesterday's RADA decision about Mr. Andriy Zaharadnyuk as defense minister who uh, deserves huge respect from us. He mm, Mm -hmm. He is a civil person who nevertheless uh, uh, is uh, familiar with the issues uh, uh, related to the military sector. Uh, thank you, Lena. It was very interesting to hear all those uh, news that you presented. Uh, now, I would like to invite Mr. Burakovsky. Thank you very much. I would uh, like to apologize for being late. Uh, yesterday, no economic issues were mentioned at the uh, parliamentary session. And now I would like to come closer to, to my topic uh, in terms of uh, political sense, we may state that the transfer of power from the uh, old power to the new power has been finished. Uh, of course, they can speak about predecessors, but it's more useful to think now about future work. Now, this new power has taken new uh, responsibility in power. New MPs have to understand that from this moment on they have taken uh, good and full responsibility for the country. Uh, and uh, this is a very complicated, politically responsible, rather boring, but very uh, complicated and effort-consuming work. In terms of economic uh, dimension, I, I am waiting for the program of the ministry. I am waiting for the KPI that they want to, to reach. Mm. Because I heard about five, seven uh, percent of growth or seven, ten percent of growth, but we have to understand how this is planned to be reached. Because as of now, we speak not, uh, we should speak not about growth, but about the survival of our economy. 3.5 percent of growth annually is uh, not enough for. Ukrainian economy to exist, to survive. As my colleagues mentioned that we can have any mergers of the ministries. When we look at the American Department of Agriculture, 
they deal with uh, analytics, with international training, with international intelligence. When they study what's going on in different agriculture markets, they deal with agriculture diplomacy, so to say. This is the ministry, which by its individual weight is uh, bigger than any other ministry in the American system of power. That's why I cannot uh, say whether the agrarian ministry should be merged with the Ministry of Economy. The, uh, the issue is in the in the functions assigned to this ministry because uh, the function of uh, any ministry is to develop the policy while other bodies have to deal with implementation of that policy. If we have uh, uh, policy development, policy implementation, and policy implementation oversight, within what body this would never work. Uh, moreover, uh, uh, now let's look at the bills. What surprised me yesterday, the parliament is a big bureaucratic uh, body machine and it should be properly organized uh, and uh, 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 we we received some assistance in uh, restructuring of Ukrainian uh, parliament. Uh, there was a famous uh, uh, document uh, produced by the Pat uh, by uh, Pat Cox uh, group, uh, which uh, d designed uh, which designed good rules for the parliament to prevent uh, the legislative spam in it, and uh, uh, now. Uh, let us speak about those laws aimed at anti-smuggling work. Ukrainian legislation describes smuggling as a uh, weapon, uh, uh, drugs, and uh, art objects. All the rest is not smuggle, smuggled products according to Ukrainian legislation. That's why the first step is to criminalize abuse in uh, bringing uh, 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 objects to Ukraine. Uh, transfer of excise uh, um, uh, uh, goods uh, is not criminalized smuggling, by the way. We, as RPR, we believe that this new parliament is not uh, to start life from the very beginning, but continue uh, some uh, uh, some steps which started to be implemented by previous uh, parliament. First step is to pass the law about economic investigations. Currently in the economy sphere, we have a set of economic uh, enforcement agencies which uh, 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 may which uh, create cover for some abuses and violations as production of amber, uh, production of sand. Mm. And quite often you may hear uh, statements, this, this is uh, prosecutor's business, this is uh, uh, judge's business, etc. Uh, uh, we have to establish the economic uh, 
uh, investigation service, which will be an analytical service and will prevent such violations. Then the law about the uh, financial services market. Currently, we have banking sector. And the National Bank has been working perfectly, in my opinion. Uh, our National Bank works in line with the best international standards, despite all the statements made by different forces. This is rather rigid uh, regulator. This is a good analytical financial center. This is a good partner able to negotiate with international structures. But we have also non-banking sector in our financial market, which are not properly regulated. We have some uh, shareholders associations and uh, we have to supervise the sector properly uh, because uh, the global crisis of 2007-2009 had clearly demonstrated the risks of the financial sector sector and uh, abuse uh, uh, of uh, power in this sector. Uh, uh, so, development of financial market in Ukraine would require uh, a tight regulation. The more liberal we are, the more rules we require. The bill about strengthening uh, of economic entities uh, from illegal actions of law enforcement agencies and uh, oversight agencies uh, like tax administration or uh, of veterinary and sanitary uh, service, etc. This bill, of course, could be passed and should be passed. So, on the one hand, we have to uh, promote business development. On the other hand, we have to protect consumers, which is a direct obligation of the state. It seems to me, when we speak about this very law, about uh, protection of uh, 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 business entities from illegal actions of uh, uh, regulating bodies and uh, uh, about the, the bill about uh, uh, excessive pressure on economic entities uh, 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 should provide for exhaustive list of uh, what is prohibited and what is a punishment uh, uh, for violations. As of now, many punishments which are prescribed, they do not work and uh, they uh, do not uh, um, deter the um, uh, offenders from violation of laws. Then the law about uh, state inspection on environmental protection. Unfortunately, environmental protection remains one of the weakest uh, um, uh, aspects in our uh, public administration. While in the uh, um, uh, European Union and in Europe in general, this is uh, the one of the uh, most complicated political areas. Um, it is not less uh, uh, sensitive than the democracy area or uh, the economic trade area. 
That's why I was a bit surprised to see that two-headed eagle, so to say, the Ministry of Environment and Energy. There are many issues which are related to environment, but not to the energy, like uh, Ukrainian woods, Capadan woods, and production of amber, which is huge economic disaster. Then there is waste management, which uh, um, require the new package of laws up to 7 or 8 percent of Ukrainian territories covered by waste and uh, uh, we recently observed situation in Lviv and in Russia it, uh, this has become the problem and uh, that's why uh, we would like the new power uh, capitalize on the uh, 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 achievements of the previous power and would do better things. We are not in a position to say that uh, uh, we would abstain from any assistance for, to them uh, vice versa. So we are ready to assist them. But uh, oh, oh, here much will depend from the willingness of new power to cooperate with not only uh, its political faction, but with those people who uh, uh, believe they can offer real changes. Let us announce a toast that new would make a good use of the advice of civil society and engage good experts uh, either from RPR or from abroad because today governance and everything which is related to the public governance, state governance uh, requires a big intellectual effort and uh, uh, here much depends on uh, uh, the pers on the human intelligence and uh, moral values. Besides ta 20 top priority uh, uh, draft laws, uh, RPR had suggested another uh, legislative initiatives. So today we have announced our top priorities. Well, we had provided uh, the list from dozens of laws to the new MPs. We hope that they will listen to our opinion. We hope that they will hear it. And we are ready to assist. We are ready to cooperate for the sake of this country. Do you have questions? What we have heard, it was useful. Whether you plan to request for regular meetings between the power representatives and uh, civic activists, because I believe that lack of communication was one of the result of non-popularity of the previous uh, power. We met with the new power representatives in summer. We issued releases on this topic. You can find them over on our topic. Then we had meetings uh, in Ukraine form with the Electoral uh, Council UA organization. So we met with them and uh, you may familiarize yourself. I absolutely agree with you that uh, this is a fundamental issue. We met with them and we plan to meet 
with them in the future. Uh, we do not take our position extremely high. We believe that we should be a good partner to all those who want to cooperate. We met with representatives from many political forces after elections and uh, we do not work for the sake of our pride. We uh, simply uh, work for the sake of this country because we feel ourselves as responsible citizens. Uh, then, by now, we had rather bifurcated system of cooperation between uh, the civil society representatives and uh, uh, the power representatives. Uh, my colleagues may present it in more details. We have uh, advisory councils, we have uh, under the ministries, we have the system of public consultations and public hearings. Um, uh, although that system uh, did not function efficiently, here much depended on the uh, personality of government official in office. So the problem here exists, and I believe that civil, civic activists should be more proactive on the one hand, on the other hand, uh, in the parliament we have the law on lobbying, and it should be passed uh, uh, to regulate uh, the attitudes, uh, the uh, relations between the parliament and the business lobbyists and the civil society. So this should be clearly regulated. Further questions? Since there are no further questions, uh, thank you very much to the panelists, to the audience, uh, and last but not least, uh, uh, we will have all these materials on our websites after lunch. If you are interested, you uh, please look at this website.